beloved Kuthumi. I come to deliver the word of Omega. You will remember, O oh my beloved, my journey to the great central sun and the plea of our mother Omega to me. She said, Kuthumi, my son, my children no longer know me. They do not hear my word and understand it. They do not recognize my face. Therefore go forth and expose the false teachings and the false teachers. In the splendor of the light, the beauty, the tenderness of the present, of the Universal Mother, I was inspired, as of old, by the light of the Virgin Mother, by the light of my Savior, to be the one who would rebuild the house of the Lord. I came from the altars of the Central Sun, and I have delivered to you a portion of that expose. I come today ever determined that the Mother Omega shall be known in the earth as the universal presence of Mother and as the very person of Mother in the heart of each temple. I am determined as you are determined that we together shall deliver the message of the age undiluted so that the word of the Lord may cover the earth, so that hungering hearts may have that truth boldly stated and emblazoned upon their hearts, so that they may read so that they may choose, so that they may be God-free. My beloved, you have discerned the signs of the times and the end of the Piscean Age and the opportunity for the laying of the foundation of the new order of the ages by those who not only perceive the light but are willing to act upon it build upon it, and live their life in the very midst of it. Some have heard the word as though a plane passed by, or a bird, and they have said, a plane passed by, a bird flew overhead, and they have resumed their lifestyle. Others say a plane has passed by. They dare to ask why and how. They feel the presence of the ascended masters. They say, who and where may I go? They see the bird of the Holy Spirit and they follow it. They leave their toiling. They know that the old dispensation is o'er. They know that the rejection and the expulsion from Eden requiring that toil and the sweat of the brow now becomes transmuted into the dispensation of the indwelling Christ. No longer toil, but the sacred labor of the Holy Spirit delivered heart, head and hand is the instrument of the Dharma as well as the balancing of karma. They know that all that is accomplished in and through them is the work of God. No longer the expelled sons and daughters, their redemption comes in the person of the Lord, our righteousness. That person in Jesus was the living Christ, 
and in you it is the same living Christ. The dispensation that once again this person of the Christ may dwell in the temple of the righteous is the great message of the world teachers in this age. Through you, as through our messenger, we will confute the Sadducees and Pharisees who have attempted to lay hold upon the avatars and confine them to their form of doctrine and dogma. We must therefore seal the message of the Savior Jesus Christ, word upon word, and many words which are not in the book. Word upon word, there must be the illumining of the sacred scriptures of East and West, so that the people who have been put upon by the false teachers and their false teaching may be liberated, and every soul upon earth will have the opportunity through this dispensation to sit beneath his own vine and fig tree, the vine of his Christ consciousness the fig tree of his causal body. And all who sit under their own vine and fig tree are one with every other saint, east and west, and every other guru ascended or unascended who has become the fullness of that vine and that fig tree. Therefore, the Anta Karana of the Lord's Spirit is upon the earth, accelerated by Sanat Kumara, Gautama Buddha, and Lord Maitreya. We come, the world teachers. We lay before you the program of Gautama as he passed the torch of illumination to the messenger, as the petals of that fire are to be passed to you. It is a program of the preaching of the gospel to every creature, to every nation, and it is the good news of the indwelling light, sufficient to all things in earth and in heaven, sufficient to your victory, to your perfectionment, and to your assumption into the light in the ritual of the ascension. We then lay before you our program of education, the printing of the word, the publishing of the word, the transfer of the message by tape recording. All of this is merely supportive of the mission of the representatives of the world teachers. For though the word be recorded, until it is assimilated and spoken, it lacks the power of the delivery and the great force of the Trinity and the Mother. Only the living Son, the daughter of God in matter, can have the fullness of the synthesis of truth to speak to the children of God. Not books upon shelves, but books whose words become engraven in the heart. Eat then, come and dine, for this is the feast of the marriage supper of the Lamb. The Lamb, Sanat Kumara, is the bridegroom, and every one of your souls may elect to be the wife of the Lamb and enter into the alchemical marriage. Every wife must weave her, her wedding garment and her veil Thus the deathless solar body is unveiled by Serapis Bay, and you will begin to understand that you may not come naked to the marriage feast. Friend, how camest thou in without a wedding garment will be the rebuke of the Lord to those who attempt to enter the chambers of the retreats of the Great White Brotherhood. The high and the mighty, or those from any walk of life, those who are thought well of men. If they be naked and without the wedding garment, 
they are cast out, for God is no respecter of persons. Therefore we come to teach weaving, going back to the homespun of earlier years, the yearning for the era of the building of a nation is upon our youth. For now we enter the building of the city four square. We enter the beginning of the third century of America's destiny. By love must all things be built, else by love they must come tumbling down. That which is built without love will have no sustenance of life, no structure of the gods. Let us begin to build anew. Let us not fear the desolation of the tearing down of all unrighteous building. For the Lord God can build up in a single day the great tower of the identity of the soul. That which is leveled is the synthetic self. And that which is raised up in three days by the Son of God is the purity of your own real identity. If you think that my message is no different from the message given in its fiery intensity, you must understand that the messenger is consumed by our presence. And our word goes forth, and therefore truly you have heard our word this morning. And we are a part of every prophet, and every prophet is the intensified sacred fire. And when that oneness occurs to you with our brotherhood, you will find yourselves never without the word, never without the mantle. For when you are truly fastened, as is the meaning of the word crucifixion, when you are truly fastened to the cosmic cross of white fire, in the very center of that cosmic cross, there is the point of light where life is one. If you require the sword of Archangel Michael, he is there to deliver the sword. If you require the tenderness of Mother Mary, she is there, and she also comes in the judgment of the great virgin. If you need the understanding of psychology as God has given it to me, I am there, for we are one, and this is the motto of our bands. We lend a hand, we lend the momentum of our causal bodies, and those who serve, and those who say, here I am, Lord, send me. Those who say it, who become it, who act upon it, have the all power of heaven and earth at their disposal. When they fulfill the initiations of their word, you may give your word, but your word will be tested. The word must be fired by your actions in the face of adversity and in the face of the adversary. Whether untoward conditions or chaos or confusion or the attempt to unseat you from your soul's calling or whether you meet personified compromise face to face. You notice well that I did not say personified evil, for there is scarcely anyone upon earth that you may admit is personified evil, for the conjuration of evil is the pointed ears, the horns and tail, and the devil that seems unreal. But I speak of embodied compromise. I speak of those who lead Slowly, yet surely, relentlessly, the way of compromise that leadeth unto death and destruction. A death that is a part of the very process of that altar path 
by alter egos who have no ego of the living God, the divine ego within them, but have chosen alterations upon the original matrix of the universal ma. These compromisers have already compromised the law. Therefore, they would compromise the souls. And therefore, they deliver sometimes mighty tomes of wisdom, great truths, and a certain form, imitation of our compassion. But in the hour of their testing, they too are exposed. And their exposure is their protection of their own personality and their willingness to compromise the truth and the soul of the chila to preserve that pseudo-personality. You may look in the governments of the nations and your own. You may look in the state governments and you may easily see the compromisers. They achieve some human good and some human evil. Beware lest you plight your troth with them, for I, the Lord my God, am a jealous God. My God and thy God is jealous for the whole soul, for the wife of the Lamb to enter the bridal chamber, to be one, to be fused with that living spirit. Therefore, wherever the Lamb's wife goeth, that wife, being fused to the light, is ever used by the light, ever the instrument of its presence. Therefore it hath no longer a will of its own, for its will is God's will. It has surrendered its human will as an atonement for all the nations. And that human will laid upon the altar cannot be taken back without impunity. And I will tell you why. When that human will is placed upon the altar, it is indeed consumed. Therefore, when the individual goes back to say, I want my rags, I want my old self. It now must take on the planetary not-self, the dweller on the threshold. This is why the last state of that man who has been healed and purged is worse than the first because now the multiplication of evil is such that the identity becomes wed to the identity of planetary evil. And the individual then retreats to the level of the mass consciousness. And the level of the mass consciousness is a loss of identity. And such individuals who prefer the lowest common denominator of the carnal mind find themselves acting almost like the animal kingdom. The cows walk in one direction upon the hillside for they move with a group soul of their species. Thus, individuals no longer functioning under the I am presence and the Christ self do not have the recourse to go back to being the soul in embryo, the soul in the point of choosing. The soul has chosen, the soul has left the carnal mind upon the altar. Now when it goes back, it will no longer be in the position of being given the opportunity to choose again to become God. Now then, when it will remove from the altar that which it has sacrificed, there enters into the individual the spirit of the arch-deceivers who now occupy the tents of the uncommitted and you will notice the manipulation of the masses by the arch-deceivers as though they were programmed, as though they were all robots and computerized manifestations. 
and the way the wind of popularity blows, so they go, and they respond in a single mass until they become mob violence and terror, easily the instruments of the fallen ones. Such are these who have withdrawn themselves from the altar of God. Thus you understand that when you commit to and accept the conversion of the Holy Spirit, you must not look back. For looking back has the penalty of the crystallization even of that pillar of salt, the crystallization of identity with the very elements themselves. Thus I come. Thus you may see in the life of St. Francis, a determination of the ancient of days to be uncompromising in the original dispensation of the literal translation of obedience, chastity, and poverty. It was that which the Spirit of the Lord delivered unto me. Perhaps time and space may change, but the one who receives that dispensation must be true to the gift given. Thus, at the close of that embodiment, when I felt my heart burdened with the failure of the mission because the brothers determined to compromise those vows, I found myself the prisoner of the rock of the Word of God in me. And as I commune with the Lord Jesus Christ, the figure of the seraphim appeared to me as it appeared to Isaiah, and I received the stigmata physically. And that stigmata is the sign of the wedding of the soul to the living spirit of the Ancient of Days and the entire descent of that Ancient of Days. Thus, I was fastened with my Savior to the white fire cross of universal being. And the blood flowed from me as the ruby ray flows from the heart, the pierced heart of the Savior, as it flows from the heart chakra of Sanat Kumara, Gautama Maitreya, and all of the saints. And that flowing ruby ray is the sign that those who will be fastened to that cross of Christ are willing for the heart to release the ruby ray hour by hour for the salvation of the children of God. It is this essence of the ruby ray, intensified love, coalescing actually as the blood coursing through your veins in your physical temples. This ruby ray, in its spiritual power, becomes the instrument whereby you redeem God's people. Thus I come this day for the initiation of the heart. I come to deliver the light that you may assimilate in this 24-hour cycle. O light of Sanat Kumara, descend now into the heart by the Christ self of each one, by the mighty threefold flame. O let that light be for the purging of the burden of the heart, the records of death and dying, the doubts, the fears, the anxiety of the years, the hardness of heart, the hatred. Let there be the melting of fear, for it is the demons who are trembling. It is the fallen ones whose hearts Fail them for their fear. But the hearts of the sons and daughters of God, 
are strengthened, renewed, joyous, filled with abundant energy for the work of the Lord at hand. Therefore, my children, let go in this hour. This hour of decision is not come as an ultimatum or a moment's notice. The hour of decision to be sent lies in thy soul's original recognition of the one sent to be the deliverer, prophesied as the coming Messiah, manifest truly in Jesus. This Messiah is the Ancient of Days, and all who have become one with that Christ. Thus, we come to quicken the inner vow made long ago, to connect the outer soul with the inner spirit. We come for a summoning of forces, for the vow is the sealing of a covenant as a contract whether a marriage contract or a business contract, it is agreement between persons. We shall act upon this law, this word, to which we affix our signatures this day and date. This is the meaning of speaking that word. Here am I, Lord, send me. So it was given by Samuel. So it is given by all of us. So it is the placing of your hand in a hand invisible that extends through the veil and is the mighty confidence of the Almighty that there is indeed a sealing of the sacred promise and that that promise can and shall be fulfilled in you as you can and shall fulfill that promise. Thus, the conclusion of my incarnation of St. Francis was the gift, the transfer. To me he gave his body and his blood. Though I felt that the outer mission Yet the inner mission of the sealing in the hearts of the devotees of the true inner vow, that mission was fulfilled. I am St. Francis, increased in stature and wisdom by the intensity of my Lord's tutoring even in the East. I am here with the acceleration of my causal body. I have learned the inner meeting, the inner meaning of that vow threefold. I have understood its application. I am fastened to the cross of the universal Christ. I have taken the vow of the Bodhisattva to be with this evolution until every child of God receives the message and makes the individual decision to reunite with God. Thus upon the cross of sacred fire I am the instrument of his word. As he is the messenger of the father, I am the messenger of the mother. Yet do not attempt to limit us or categorize us, but that you may understand that the world teachers come in the polarity of the mission of the spirit and the letter of the law. So I come this day. Let your hearts become the furnace of violet flame. Let your hearts become a furnace where the Hebrew boys may enter and receive the fiery trial of initiation and emerge without 
the smell of smoke upon them. Let your heart become that burning furnace that your soul might be renewed each day and that all souls who come to you might drink of the cup of the water of life that is an elixir of all-consuming love. I am with you, brave ones, bold ones. I am here because you have called me in your innermost soul, and I would not leave you where you were, but pick you up and renew you and show you who you are. Adieu in the light.